Each morning, Tobit counted how many days it would be before Tobias would return from his journey. When the time was up and his son had not yet returned, he thought, Maybe he has been delayed there, or perhaps Gabael is dead and there is no one to hand over the money. He became very sad. Anna, his wife, said, My son is dead. He is no more among the living. She began to lament over him, saying, Why did I let you go, the light of my eyes? Tobit said to her, Calm yourself, my sister. Do not worry. He is well. Something unexpected may have happened there, causing them to delay. His travelling companion is a kinsman of ours, someone we can trust. Do not grieve for him, my sister. He will soon be back. She replied, Keep quiet. Do not try to deceive me. My child is dead. Every day she would go out and wash the road which her son had taken. At sunset, she would come back only to weep and moan all night, unable to sleep. She trusted no eyes but her own. When the fourteen days of festivities were over which Draguel had sworn to hold for his daughter's marriage, Tobias went to Raguel and said, Let me return home, because my parents will certainly be despairing that they will never see me again. I beg you, my father, to let me go back to my father's house. I have told you in what state he was when I left him. Raguel replied, Stay with me, and I will send messengers to your father to give him news of you. Tobias said, No, let me go to him. Then Raguel handed over to him his wife Sarah and half of all his goods, servants, oxen, sheep, donkeys, camels, clothes, silver, and various other things. Raguel blessed them and allowed them to set out. Bidding farewell to Tobias, he said to him, Goodbye, my son, safe journey. May the Lord of heaven bless you and make you fruitful, and may I see your children before I die. To his daughter Sarah, he said, Honour your parents-in-laws, since from now on they are your parents, just as we who gave you life. Go in peace, my daughter. And may I always hear good things of you as long as I live. He embraced her and let them depart. Edna, in her turn, said to Tobias, My dear son, may the Lord bring you back one day, so that I may see your children and be happy before the Lord. In the sight of the Lord, I entrust my daughter to your care. Do not cause her any sadness. Go in peace, my son. From now on, I am your mother. As Sarah is your sister, may we all live happily all the days of our life. She kissed them both and saw them off happily. Tobias left on his journey with happiness and joy, praising the Lord of heaven and earth, the King of the universe, for the happy outcome of his mission. He blessed Raguel and his wife Edna, saying, May I honour you all the days of my life, as the Lord has bidden. When they arrived near Kassirin, which faces the city of Nineveh, Raphael said to Tobias, You know in what state your father Tobit was when we left him. Let us go ahead and prepare the house before your wife Sarah arrives with the others. Bring with you the gall of the fish. They went out together and the dog also went, walking behind them. Now Anna was sitting there, scanning the road along which her son would return. She saw Tobias and Raphael coming in the distance, and said to the father of Tobias, Your son is coming with the man who accompanied him. While Tobias and Raphael were still going along the road, Raphael said to Tobias, I am sure your father will regain his sight. Smear his eyes with the gall of the fish. The medicine will make the white films shrink and peel off from his eyes. Then your father will regain his sight and see the light. Anna ran to meet Tobias and threw her arms around his neck, saying, At last I have seen you again, my child. Now I can die. And she began to cry. Tobit also got up and stumbled out through the door of the courtyard. Tobias ran to him with the gall of the fish in his hand. He blew on his father's eyes, embraced him and said, Father, have confidence. 
Then he smeared the gall of the fish on Tobit's eyes. Tobias waited. Then with both hands, he peeled off the white films from the corner of his eyes. When Tobit saw his son, he threw his arms around Tobias' neck and began to weep. He said, Blessed be God. Blessed be his great name. Blessed be his holy angels. Blessed be his great name for evermore. You have punished me, but you have taken pity on me, and now I can see my son, Tobias. Tobias went inside, praising God at the top of his voice. After entering the house, he told his father about the successful outcome of his journey, how he got the money, and how he married Sarah, daughter of Raguel, who just then was approaching the gates of Nineveh. Tobit, happy and praising God, went out to meet his daughter-in-law at the gates of Nineveh. All those who saw him, walking alone and unaided, were amazed that he could see. Tobit proclaimed to them that God had taken pity on him and cured him. Then he went to Sarah and blessed her, saying, Welcome, daughter. May God be blessed for having brought you to us. Blessing on your father and mother. Blessing on Tobias, my son, and you, my daughter. Come in, my daughter. Come into your home. Joy be yours and all blessings. Welcome. It was a day of great rejoicing for all the Jews who lived in Nineveh. Ahikar and Nabad, Tobit's nephews, came to join in the wedding celebration, which lasted for a week. Tobias received many wedding gifts. When the wedding feast was over, Tobit called Tobias and said to him, Be sure, my son, to give the wages to the man who accompanied you, and we should add something extra. Tobias said, What shall I give him? It would not be too much if I were to give him half of what I have brought back, since he has brought me home again safe and sound, cured my wife, helped me to get back the money, and also cured your blindness. How much extra am I to give him? The old man said, Half of all that you brought back would be well justified in his case. Then Tobias called him and said to him, Please take half of all that you have brought back before you go away. Raphael took Tobit and Tobias aside and said to them, Bless God and proclaim his glory and render him thanks before all the living for all he has done for you. It is good to praise God and to exalt his name by making known in a worthy manner the story of God's deeds. Do not be slow in giving him thanks. It is good to hide the secret of kings, but the works of God should be publicly proclaimed. Acknowledge the works of God. Do good and evil will not harm you. Prayer and fasting are good, but still better almsgiving and righteousness. It is better to give alms than to trust from God. Almsgiving preserves from death and purifies from all sin. Those people who give alms and act justly have a long life, but sinners leave alms. I will hide nothing from you, but tell you the whole truth. Yes, I have said that it is good to keep the secrets of kings. The glorious words of God should be publicly proclaimed. Tobit, when you and your daughter-in-law Sarah prayed, it was I who brought and presented them before the Holy One. In the same way, I was with you every time you buried the dead. And when you did not hesitate to rise up and leave your meal in order to hide the dead man, I was with you, sent to test your faith. Well, God sent me to cure you and also to cure Sarah, your daughter-in-law. I am Raphael, one of the seven holy angels who present the prayers of holy people and who stand before the glory of God. They both trembled with awe. They threw themselves face downwards on the ground because they were seized with terror. But Raphael said to them, Do not be afraid. Be at peace. Bless God always. For I did not come on my own account, but because God willed it. Bless him for ever. All the time that I was visible to you, I neither ate nor drank anything. I only appeared to do so. 
Now bless and give thanks to God, because I am returning to the one who sent me. Write down in a book all that has happened. Then he ascended and disappeared. Tobit and Tobias got up, but Raphael was no longer visible. They kept blessing God and singing his praises. They made known the wonderful works God had done when an angel of God had appeared to them. Tobit, in an ecstasy of joy, composed this prayer. Blessed be God, living for all ages, for his kingdom lasts forever. It is he who punishes and he who has mercy. He makes people go down to the depths of the underworld and raises them up from the great abyss. No one can escape his hand. Acknowledge him, O children of Israel, before all the nations. Though he has dispersed you among them, he now shows you his greatness. Exalt him before all the living, because he is our God and Lord, our Father and God for ever and ever. He punishes us for our wrongdoing, but again he will forgive us. He will bring us together again from amongst all the nations among whom we have been dispersed. If you turn back to him with all your heart and soul and live justly before him, then he will turn back to you and will no longer hide his face from you. See what he has done for you and render him thanks aloud. Bless the Lord who alone is just and praise the King of Ages. I praise him in the land of my captivity and show his strength and greatness to my sinful people. Be converted, you sinners, and live justly before him, certain that he will be pleased with you and show you mercy. I will praise my God, the King of Heaven. My soul, radiant with happiness, will proclaim his greatness. May all people give thanks to him and sing of his glory in Jerusalem. Jerusalem, the holy city, God has punished you because of your sins, but he will have pity once more on the children of the just. Give thanks to the Lord in a worthy manner and bless the King of the ages so that his temple may be rebuilt in your midst with joy. God will gladden your exiles and show love to the unfortunate for ages to come. Your light will shine brightly over all the earth. Many nations will come from afar and citizens from the farthest parts of the earth to celebrate your holy name. They will carry gifts in their hands, gifts for the King of Heaven. Generation after generation will manifest their joy and call you the Chosen One forever. Jerusalem, cursed be all who hate you. Cursed be all who destroy you and tear down your walls. Cursed all who topple your towers and burn down your homes. Blessed forever be those who build you up. You will rejoice and be glad because the children of the just will be gathered again to praise the Lord of all ages. Blessed are those who love you, Jerusalem. Blessed are those who rejoice in your peace. Blessed are also those who have sorrowed because of your calamities. They will rejoice again on seeing your glory, and they will share your happiness forever. My soul blesses God, the great King, because Jerusalem will be rebuilt as his home for all time to come. What joy it will be for me when a remnant of my descendants will live to see your glory and thank the King of Heavens. Her gates will be built of sapphires and emeralds, her walls of precious stones, her towers and ramparts of pure gold. The streets of Jerusalem will be paved with ruby and with stone of offer. The gates of Jerusalem will resound with hymns of joy and her inhabitants will shout, Alleluia! Blessed be the God of Israel. Within you, they shall praise his holy name for ever and ever. In this way, Tobit ended his song of thanksgiving. Tobit died peacefully at the age of 112 years and was buried with honor in Nineveh. He was 62 years old when he became blind and after he regained his sight, he lived happily practiced almsgiving and continued to praise God and to proclaim his great works. When he was about to die, he called Tobias and said to him, My son, take your children and go to Medea, 
because I believe in the word of God, which Nahum prophesied about Nineveh. Everything that the prophets sent by God pronounced about Assyria and Nineveh will happen. Not a word will remain unfulfilled. But it will all come to pass in due time. Nineveh will be destroyed. You will be safer in Medea than in Assyria or Babylon because I am certain and I believe that all that God has said will be fulfilled. Not a single word of the prophecies will fail. Our kinsmen who live in the land of Israel will be dispersed and led away into captivity. As a result, the whole of the land of Israel will be deserted. Jerusalem and Samaria will be desolate. The house of God will be burnt down and left in ruins for some time. But God will again take pity on his people and they will return to their land. They will rebuild the temple, though it will not be like the first one until better times come. When that time comes, they will all return from captivity. They will rebuild Jerusalem in all its magnificence. In it, they will rebuild the house of God in all its glory for all generations to come, just as the prophets have foretold. People of all nations will be converted and will worship God in truth. They will bury their idols, which led them into error, and they will praise the eternal God in uprightness. All the Israelites saved at that time will remember the Lord in all truth. They will come together and go to Jerusalem. They will live securely forever in the land of Abraham, which will be given back to them. Those who sincerely love God will rejoice, but sinners and the unjust will disappear from the earth. Now, my children, I give you this advice. Serve God and do what is pleasing in His sight. Teach your children how to do what is right and how to give alms. Teach them also to remember God and to bless His name sincerely at all times with all their strength. My son, leave Nineveh. Do not remain here. The very day that you bury your mother here beside me, leave this place. Do not even stay overnight. I know that the people here commit many injustices and practice great treachery and no one is ashamed of doing so. You see what Nadab did to Ahikad, my nephew, who had brought him up. He was forced to go underground while still alive. But God punished Nadab by exposing his injustice. He brought Ahikar into the light and sent Nadab down into eternal darkness because he had tried to kill Ahikar. Because he gave alms, Ahikar was delivered from the death planned for him by Nadab. Instead, Nadab fell into the trap and perished. See how almsgiving and uprightness can save you and how wrongdoing leads to death. But I feel I am breathing my last. They laid him on his bed and he died. He was given an honourable burial. When Anna, his mother, died, Tobias buried her next to his father. Then Tobias, with his wife and family, made their way to Medea and settled in Ekpatana with Raguel, his father-in-law. He took great care of his parents-in-law of their old age and he buried them with honour at Ekpatana in Medea. Tobias inherited Raguel's fortune as well as that of his father Tobin. Tobias died at the age of 117 years at Ekpatana in Medea. But before he died, he saw the downfall of Nineveh, which Syaxares, king of Medea, destroyed. He blessed God for everything he inflicted on the Ninevites and Assyrians. He saw the Ninevites and the Assyrians reduced to slavery and taken to Medea. Thus, before he died, he was able to rejoice over the fate of Nineveh. He blessed the Lord God forever and ever. Now Jesus was going up to Jerusalem. On the way, he took the twelve aside and said to them, We are going up to Jerusalem and the Son of Man will be delivered over to the chief priests and the teachers of the law. They will condemn him to death, and will hand him over to the Gentiles to be mocked and flogged and crucified. On the third day he will be raised to life. Then the mother of Zebedee's sons came to Jesus with her sons, and kneeling down asked a favour of him. 
What is it you want? he asked. She said, Grant that one of these two sons of mine may sit at your right and the other at your left in your kingdom. You don't know what you are asking, Jesus said to them. Can you drink the cup I am going to drink? We can, they answered. Jesus said to them, You will indeed drink from my cup, but to sit at my right or left is not for me to grant. These places belong to those for whom they have been prepared by my Father. When the ten heard about this, they were indignant with the two brothers. Jesus called them together and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wants to be first must be your slave, just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Imagine me and you, I do I think about you day and night It's only right to think about the girl you love And hold her tight, so happy together I should call you up, invest a dime, and you say you belong to me, and ease my mind, imagine how the world could be, so very fine, so happy together. together the dice it had to be the only one for me is you and you for me so happy together Together, how is the weather? We're happy together, so happy together, happy together, so happy together, so happy together, so happy together. So happy together. 